More Tom Petty by request, guys. Let's just leap right in. Oh! in here about one. Great thing. Hey, hey, welcome back. This is Shane from Guitar Work. Glad to be back. Always request for Tom Petty. Every time I do a Tom Petty song, people say more, 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 more Tom Petty. And that is Refugee, of course, by Tom Petty, 1980, uh, from that record, 1980. And, um, a wonderful song and you know what there's not that much to it you may have seen there's one bar chord now it's the easiest bar chord there is I think most would agree so if you're struggling with bar chords this is the song that it's gonna put you over the top so I very much encourage you to stick with this one it's the F sharp minor it's an easy easiest part we'll talk about proper technique and all that but hey thank you for subscribing coming back all your thumbs up have meant the world here really really appreciate that and uh, it's been fun to communicate with you we'll be using the fabulous beat buddy as always from singular sound happily affiliated with them we'll talk more about that how you might grab one of those but i'll send you as always to patreon.com slash guitar at work go grab these sheets this is the song here we've got two song sheets and one detail sheet and uh, there's a ton of other songs up there i keep saying to you that patreon does not have to be a lifelong commitment uh, go up there grab a bunch of songs i've done a whole lot of videos up there so uh, you can play along with all of those i invite you to to do that and we can communicate uh, within that as well so go grab those patreon.com slash guitar at work am i forgetting anything let's just leap right in um you sing an f sharp minor here there's your f sharp minor it's on your sheet and now if right away in the bar chords if that's new to you just quickly a little spiel here is get your wrist down if, if your wrist is up like that you're probably doomed okay you just can't get that first finger up and over like that so wrist comes down you kind of come in at the guitar from underneath and first finger is nice and straight i'm right on the silver fret wire there right on the silver fret part and um, basically i'm on it and then i'm rolling it to my left to get rid of the creases from my knuckles that my strings might be getting caught in and buzzing and also my you may not be able to do this with until you're used to stretch but uh, middle fingers on top of that first finger to lend a little extra squish power yeah that helps quite a bit and I gotta say there's a little bit of pull from the left shoulder too there's it's not all squish power so here you would never do this but here's an F sharp minor with no thumb so that implies a really pulling there so supposing it's, a, it's I don't know 65% squish and 35% pull and you shouldn't get sore or throw your back out trying a bar chord, okay? Um, but the riff is very much based on that you're gonna see F sharp minor now on your detail sheet you're seeing the main riff you start with the bass note, it says F sharp minor bass. Bass note is the lowest note in the, in the chord, so that's your big thick string. And then a down stroke, it's saying. Again, that's bass, down, and you'll see a walk. It's going to go second fret, fourth fret on the low E. So we have so far F sharp minor, and second fret, fourth fret, and now A chord. Now look at that A, it's, it's, you're not fingering it the way I normally would, like in a, in a different song, I mean, you might finger yours like this, or however you might do yours. Um, this, I'll call it, there's no real name for this fingering, but I'll call it the rock A, because it happens a lot in rock. F sharp minor, just barred. See that, barring that guy like that. And it's easy to get to from the bar, from the power, the F sharp minor. And you get two down strokes, now to an E chord. And we all know one of those. That's your main riff, which is like 80% of the song. That's it, so F sharp minor. And walk. A, down, down, E is down, down. That's it, let's do a couple of those. And I'd recommend when you're going to the F sharp minor to repeat, start with the first finger. You need him, so I've got one, I've got a whole beat to get the other guys over, kind of pivot. One, two, three. And I want to bring to your attention the A chord comes in a little earlier than than would be normal. Not it's not abnormal, but it's called pushing bass right here. That's a push anticipation. Some people call that as well, a more classically trained. Um, and that um, it comes in when your foot is up. It's on the up beat, the end of four really. Don't need to count it, but. more of those. Slow it down. There you go. F sharp minor. That's your main riff. Well, that's, I'll call that skeleton. That gives you the pulses. Um, but to my ear, there's, there's a, some percussion missing. So once I have those punches in there, which is really, again, the skeleton, the pulses, uh, I can start adding some light whisper strums to fill it up like a... Boom. 
I'm still preserving boom, 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 boom. And just putting in some light stuff. I think you'll find that comes very, very, very naturally once you have the main riff down, okay? So I've written in just a skeletal part and hoping that you'll get that down and then add. It's really just upstrokes you're adding, right? Some upstrokes in between those downstrokes. Um, but feel it the other way first. Very, very important. Steps along the way, very, very important. We don't just want to always leap into the end product. Um, so that is your main riff. It goes round, around, 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 around. And then uh, during the pre-chorus, you're hitting the D chord. It don't really matter to me, baby. Here's a now B5. Last new chord here is B5. It's not a it's not a bar chord. It's called a power chord. It happens a lot in rock. You need to know this guy. Second fret here of your A. And here's your ring finger on the D string at the fourth fret. Pinky's on the fourth fret of that G. Um, B5. Now the, the the term five has become internet speak for a power chord. B5. There's theoretical reasons for that. They just don't matter right now. It's, it's got that rocky kind of sound. If you were to play a regular B, it's too pretty, eh? Way too pretty. So that B way more rocky. So a pre-chorus is a D. It don't really matter to me, baby. Straight down up, B5. You believe? What you want to believe? Now is your main riff in the chorus. And into that distance. Okay, now, the verse, the verse section above that also uses the, the main riff um, throughout. But when the singer is in, we want to do something called ducking. So I'm going to play the same thing, but I'm just going to rest my right hand right here. Like that, to, to quiet things down, get this thuddy growl approach. It's going to be... Straight eighth notes. One and two and three. So you can still feel those pulses, right? And I'm really just this all down strokes. Really thuddy. With the concentration on the low end of the chord, meaning the, the thicker strings. It's called ducking. You duck for the singer, and then when the chorus comes in, and a pre-chorus in this case... Then you go loud again, and <coughs> pardon me, that contributes to really good dynamic in the song, and you're not stepping on the singer, and uh, you don't want to step on the singer. They think it's all about them. So hey, that is it. There's a bridge in there, but it's just the normal, easy chord strumming. A, a slow version of this play along, uh, the song comes in at 116 beats a minute. I'm using the rock one pattern, and there's always people asking me about that. Rock one pattern, and we've done this before, but uh, you know how to find out if you have a beat buddy. Or thinking of getting one, what? How do I know what pattern to use in a song that comes preloaded on your Beat Buddy? Well, if you go to the Sing to Sound website and then you go to the Beat Buddy menu, uh, you're going to see a song matching tool, and I pulled that up and then just type in Refugee. It came up. Tom Petty came up with two options. If you have the premium library, the full version of the Beat Buddy, you have an SD card, and uh, you can upgrade and add songs and, and drum sounds and all that to it. And there's a whole Tom Petty folder. And it's exactly what was played on the recordings. It's ridiculous. It's really, really cool. If you don't have that, there's another option, which is just use the preloaded on any beat buddy you might have, the Rock One pattern at 116 BPM, which stands for beats per minute, right? Uh, love it. It's way more fun than a metronome. Go grab one of those. Uh, you'll see a promo code GAW10, and uh, the links are in the description below. You use that promo code to get check out and you get 10% off. Helps to support the channel. So many of you have been doing that, and we've been communicating it's a ton of fun thank you for that um, so I'm going to go down it's this easy at 116 I'm going to go down to 96 and play a verse chorus verse chorus as a play along and um, remember the value of play along uh, is uh, is recovery skills. So supposing you're slow getting to a chord you, maybe you have to wait till the next round of the, of the main riff you may not get them all but you'll get some and the fact that you're having to wait and be conscious of how much time is going by is great for your musicality. It's a really, really big deal. We're not playing enough with other people these days, and uh, this, this really helps to simulate that. So what am I forgetting? 116 beats. I'm going to go grab those sheets at Patreon. They really do help, and many, many more. And I'll bring it in here. I'm going to do four main riffs for the intro. We're going to go verse, uh, chorus, verse, chorus. Here we go. One, two, three. Intro. Main riff four times. For the singer, main riff, verse one. One. Don't throw it. E. Talk too much about it. Sharp minor. No big secret. We didn't get around it. Now, pre chorus, D. It don't really matter to me. B5. Believe. What you want to believe. 
sharp minor. You go. Chorus. Like a refugee. Now duck again. Second verse. You know what? Somebody must have kicked you around some. A sharp minor. Tell me why? Revel in your band. Pre-chorus, second one, D. It don't make no difference to me, baby. B5. Your buddies had to fight to be free. Chorus, four times. Don't live like a refugee. So that's the 20, 20 beats slower than the, whoa, than the main riff. And, um, <coughs> pardon me, it comes in 116. That was at 96. So you should be able to do that, right? Before you move forward, you should be able to do that. And if you need to do that slow play along a few times um, to get the hang of it, uh, it's a good idea. That's practice, 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 practice. I'll go back up to 116 here, and we'll do that at the, we'll do the full speed. Uh, full length play along for this guy. Uh, remember, uh, hang on to your hats, don't throw out your back, and nobody's gonna get hurt. And if you miss something, wait for the next one, okay? It's all about real time recovery. Go grab those sheets, patreon.com slash guitar work. And then, um, just right after this, we'll do the lead in the intro as well, for those of you that have been enjoying the lead stuff, and thank you for letting me know about that. Uh, if, I'm gonna put the, the, the lead in the, in, this, in the intro, I'll do it at the end of this video, just so I have something to peck away at, I'll use the arrow slooper for that. So here comes the full speed play along, F sharp minor, you've got your intro, main riff four times. Here she comes, one, two, three, four. F-sharp minor, oh, one. E. Talk too much about it, it's verse one. Second line, F-sharp minor. Ain't no big secret. E, why how we get around it? Three chords, nice and loud. D. Don't really matter to me, baby. B5. Believe, you wanna believe. Make chorus, you don't. To live. Second verse coming out, duck. Somebody must have kicked you around, so. Love that line. Tell me why you want to live. Revel in your band. Pre chorus, number two, D. It don't make no difference to me, baby. B5. Everybody's had a fight to be free. F sharp minor, so you don't. Of course. Stay on your E, bridge. Baby, we ain't the first. A, regular A is fine here. A lot of other lovers been burned. D. Right now it seems real to you. Use an E. Got a scroll. You gonna fight you, me. Now instrumental, second page. That's your main riff during the organ solo. Two more. First now, F should duck it, F sharp minor, somewhere, somehow. Kicked you around, son. F sharp minor, who knows, maybe you're kidnapped, take away help for ransom. D. Three chorus don't really matter to me, baby. B5. Everybody's the fight to be free. Isn't F sharp minor, you don't. Stop it there. 
Uh, hope you did okay with that. Now it's flying by. They fade out at the end. You go as long as you want. If you're jamming with other people, it could go on for a long time and have a bit of fun with it. Um, so hey, you might want to do that over and over and over again. And uh, you know the areas you'll need to clean up. Remember, you nail that F sharp minor chord. It's a million other songs that you can play as well. So it's not just the one song. And be conscious of how hard you're pressing. Sometimes when we do those real-time play-alongs, you're pushing ten times harder than you have to. That's why you're going to get sore and ice down your wrist and all that. Um, hey, but I'm going to jump in the, the lead stuff over top I'll invoke the Eros looper here by singular sound which plugs directly into the beat buddy love this thing love it love it love it and I will just press this button right here loop studio it's press when I press go on the uh, on the beat buddy it speaks to the looper and uh, starts and stops it's just amazing and I want to bring your attention to the bottom uh, toward the bottom of your uh, of your detail sheet We've seen this scale shape many times, okay? and you're, hey, it's just happening in different locations compared, in, depending on the uh, key of the song. So it's F sharp blue scale, it's this guy here. Second, five, two, three, four, two, four, two, four, five, two, five, two, five. We're gonna go back down to read that. F sharp blue scale. Um, now you've seen that many, many times, and uh, there are other places we can play it, but let's nail that down. There's an extension too that I'm always throwing at you. I have to go four, five, six, and then I'm going to tuck under five, seven, five, seven, eight. Backwards. Eight, seven, five, and a seven, five, six, five, four. Those are the, it's the same scale in a different location. So you basically. You know, sort of increasing your range there. You can go from free to go from one to the next. The intro lead does that, and uh, I'll just get a little uh, a little loop going. It's this easy. When I press go on the beat buddy, it's going to give me that fancy count in, and then it's going to start recording, and I'll do a couple of rounds. One, two, down. Hey, look, mono hands. Look at that. I played a scale over top of that. Extension. Now the intro lead, I'll slow it down in a sec, but I think you recognize it. Yeah, let's slow that right down. Um, it's great to have that lead because it's coming right out of the scale that we're talking about, so giving you vocabulary. Scale is just a scale, and then a little bit of vocabulary, some people call them licks or leads, whatever it is. Um, it's how do you use the scale, right? So you're seeing that here, intro lead, there's two phrases, and it starts here, fourth fret of that D string. And here's four again. Now this note is the only note that's not in that particular scale. Just a second. First fret. And your first finger goes goes back and gets it, and then goes right back up to its position there on the second fret. So now they've seen the four here, and a slide. It's you pick the four. Slide up to the six and then back to the four. Now, if sliding's new to you, you can't press too hard, you'll get too much resistance, right? But you do have to keep a firm grip on it so that the note sustains. So, so far, you have this. And end it on the second fret of that D string. That's phrase number one. I'll do that a couple more times. One more time. Second phrase begins the same. Now a small bend here on the acoustic. Okay, you could you could kind of hurt yourself. You kind of, I kind of cheated. Doing it on an electric is a lot easier to bend on an electric because the strings are typically way lighter. I'm just gonna tiny little bend on the fourth fret, just a, just a little bit. There. And then you, you've got your first finger. He's gonna play the t the top two strings at the second fret there. So you get the bend, and then this guy's already set up. It's two. Two. Okay, so that's this. 
So here's your second phrase so far. Sorry, that was the first phrase. Here's the second phrase. And it ends five to seven. Slide like that. That's in your extension five. Five to seven on the B string. So second phrase. Tiny bend, okay, it's just a tiny bend unless you're playing in electric. You're kind of cheating it, giving the illusion of bending. So phrases one and two, back to back. There we go. I'll put the looper on and uh, <coughs> play that a couple of times as well. With that, again, uh, Aeros Looper, Singular Sound, Aeros Looper, and the uh, Beat Buddy, absolutely fantastic. Uh, get one, get both, whatever you can do, and uh, you'll see a promo code GAW10, and it's a really, really great outfit, and they're constantly improving with firmware updates and all that, and adding sounds and stuff to the beat buddy is really, really great. Go grab one of those or both of them. And so here's our loop. I'll let it go around a couple times. Phrase number one, phrase number two. Here's the number one. Phrase number one. One, two, three, four. Do one more time. Wait it up. Here we go. Intro lead. So round and round it goes. Um, I hope you're doing a little bit of lead stuff, and even if you don't want to become a lead guitar player, it's uh, it helps to individualize your fingers, and it's a lot of fun as well. If you're jamming with if you're jamming with somebody, one person is playing the chords like that, the other person is playing the lead part, and uh, really cool thing to do. Um, so hey, I want to thank you for coming back. All that good stuff, all your comments and your thumbs up have meant the world here. I want to thank you for that, and uh, it's been great to communicate with you. Thumbs up, and uh, your comments, suggestions, and even some of your complaints. So why not? Um, always fun and go grab yourself a looper and a uh, beat buddy and uh, a ton of fun so we'll see you very soon guys keep the requests coming here we go one two ow